What is up, Packers fans, and welcome back to another episode of The Daily Draft, brought to you by Badger State Brewing in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'm your host, Ross Uglum, and as you might be able to tell, I'm still fighting uh, the, this cold flu. It's not COVID, tested and tested negative, so um, it is not that, but uh, still fighting it. Still, though, need to get you guys the daily Packers draft content that you require, and uh, we, we love so much bringing it to you every day. Kalen Bullock, interesting, um, because he was the one guy I felt like could really play free safety in this class. Um, then kind of didn't test like that. And plus, uh, well, two things happened. First of all, Jeff Halfley talked about how much he cares about tackling, which is something that you'll find about uh, – Kalen Bullock, and also the Packers basically said we're going to play uh, Xavier McKinney at free safety, even though he runs what he runs in the 40, which, by the way, is fine. Xavier's been an awesome free safety, and, um, you know, that lack of top-end time to speed has not been an issue throughout his career, so he can play free safety. It's just that he's been such a good box safety, you know, I mean um, – I think he had like 38% free safety usage last year. Uh, the Giants moved him all over the field. And so pairing, you know, pairing Xavier McKinney with an elite free safety and allowing McKinney to kind of like float around and do cool stuff is also an interesting way to use him. But it, it, as of right now, I don't think that's what Green Bay is going to do. Anyway, um, Kalen Bullock, pros, he's the best free safety in the draft class on film. And what I mean by that is he just operates the best in space 15 to 20 yards away from the quarterback. His range was the best on film, right? And he has the best ball skills. He has, like, all of the things that you would want in a free safety. He does all those things the best. Um, very fast. 4.48 is super fast for a safety. And that shows up on film. That's not just track speed. Um, he's got elite ball skills. Uh, really catches it away from his frame naturally and just does a good job of anticipating what quarterbacks are trying to do and really understanding, too, what wide receivers are trying to do in a route concept. Like, Because he's kind of a gambler, but there were not that many times, even as bad as USC's defense was, where there were chunk explosives that were really Kalen Bullock's fault. Um his range is extremely high level. And what I mean by range is, you know, I always think of range as that, that play that Nick Collins made in Super Bowl 45 where he came from the far hash and went all the way to the sideline to pick up pick off that duck um, that Howard Green caused Ben Roethlisberger to, to throw. But you, you can kind of see like the Nick Collins cam on some of those replays where even though that was a terrible throw, he still had so much ground to cover. And... You, you see some of that in Xavier McKinney highlights, and they're all over the place in Kalen Bullock highlights. Like he has elite range when he sticks his foot in the ground and needs to change direction and go play a ball in the air. Um, it's, it's really, really impressive. Um, he moves like a cornerback in his, his hips and his feet. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of times when guys end up as a safety – and we just talked about this in the Trey Benson video, being a linear athlete. F safeties are often linear athletes, which is fine. Guys that you don't want, right, like in the slot, covering guys with a two-way go because their hips aren't that good. Um, guys that get kind of high in the back pedal. Um, and, and the word oily comes to mind when you watch Kalen Bullock play. He can change direction. And that is at a cornerback level, not a safety level. I, he he just is the best cover safety, I think, in the whole class. Um, and we'll talk about soon why that might not be enough. Uh, zone awareness is elite. And what I mean by that is can play single high stuff, can play two, can play four, um, understands how to match patterns, understands, you know, how to defend smash how to defend dagger how to defend these popular route concepts like he 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 does the homework he understands when you're running some of your favorite stuff he, he usually knows where you're going and that ability to 
have a good feel for zone coverage and not just be like, okay, well, this guy's in my area. Now I have to go guard him. Like there are instincts to it. And he has those instincts. Um, he's got excellent length for the position. He's a tall, <laughs> excuse me, guys, I'm sorry. He's a tall player with long arms. And that has to do with that range part of it again. Like you, you, there are balls that he'll get a fingertip on that other guys won't literally because of his length and that speed and that range. Um, he does have good bursts. He triggers quickly. Like when it is time to go downhill and fit the run, he goes. Uh, and but but now we'll get to the con part. Uh, when when he does come downhill quickly, the tackling it is bad. Uh, I don't. I mean that is nobody talks about. Unfortunately, nobody talks about this kid without talking about how much he doesn't tackle. I, you know, I don't know what else to say. Like the kid just doesn't tackle. And and a lot of that, I'm not going to say it's not his fault, but he's very light. So I mentioned um, tall kid, long arms. Totally true. 85th percentile height for a, for a safety at six foot two flat. Second percentile height. And that's not even, that's, or wait, excuse me. That's not even height adjusted. He's 6'2", 188. That's like receiver build. He's a very slight human at 6'2", 188. Very thin. Um, and, and like I said, that comes with 81st percentile arm length and 83rd percentile wingspan. He's a big guy, like, not big, but long, right? The, getting his hands in, in passing lanes, like I said, he's tall, he's long, but at 188 pounds, there's nothing to him. And that shows up when he's trying to tackle guys. And he's not strong. And I don't just mean that because of the, you know, he had the terrible bench press, I think, too. But, um, man, uh, just so little. Um, his jump testing didn't match his film because I thought he was a pretty explosive athlete. Or the 10-yard split on the 40-yard dash. So I, I don't know if he... Didn't have a very good trainer or what, but the jump testing doesn't make sense for what I see on film and for what he's able to put forth in a 10-yard split in the 40-yard dash. Uh, why didn't he do agilities? It's a good question, uh, especially for a guy, as I mentioned, when I say moves like a cornerback, I meant it. I thought he had the hips. And and by the way, there are people that are kind of scouting him as a quarterback, be cornerback because of how light he is. And because of how poorly he tackles, um, I think that's going to be a pretty big change, obviously, from what he did at USC. There's going to be a learning curve there if you're going to take him as a corner. But uh, I would have just liked to see agility numbers for a guy that I didn't think was hurt. And and I just, you know, whether it was at USC's Pro Day or whatever, those numbers are helpful. Um, once again, please tackle. That's in the cons. I he just needs to tackle better. I mean, I, I don't know that I'm willing to just throw it all on while he's super tall and skinny. There's an effort level there or a willingness too that that's kind of not where you'd want it to be. Um, and and look, there's some really good safeties that are super high level ball producers where you'd say, boy, I wish they'd tackle more. He would have to really get his hands on the football a lot and really be a, a racer type guy to get away with tackling as poorly as he does to continue to play the safety position. Okay, um, Packers fit. He's too light for them. Like they, I could not imagine them taking 188 pound safety. Um, overall, probably not the athlete they're looking for. Again, we don't have agility numbers. I I don't know. Uh, I, I will say they like their West Coast guys plenty. You know, we've gone ad nauseum about all the guys from USC that they've taken, all the guys from UCLA that they've taken. Rodgers went to Cal. Jordan Love went to Utah State. Devontae Adams went to Fresno State. Like, I could go, you know, Kevin King went to Washington. I could go on and on about all the top 60 picks that they've used from West Coast guys. But ultimately, it does seem like Halfley cares if guys want to tackle. And he didn't want to tackle. Uh, 
It seems like they're going to play McKinney at free, and Bullock is not a box safety. So that'd be another negative in the Packers fit side. I will say though, he would he could potentially have the versatility to be interchangeable. I've mentioned um evaluators and teams looking at him as a corner. And if you're gonna look at him as potentially like a slot corner, and he could maybe have some of that like Micah Hyde nickel free safety stuff to him. Uh certainly thinner version of like a Cooper DeGene. Okay. You know, if you're talking about interchangeability with like we're gonna kind of ask like Keyshawn and Kalen Bullock and Xavier McKinney to do a number of different things. You could sort of start having that conversation with me, and I'd, I'd maybe sort of buy into it. But ultimately, I, I don't, I don't know that he makes a ton of sense for Green Bay. Um, overall grade, he. So I have an updated three point oh. He's at thirty ninth. I, I think that's probably high. Um. He's still going to end up with a round two grade just because I think he's basically the only player in the class that can be a true free safety, and I'm interested in that. Um, I don't think he's a Packers fit. Right now he's safety two behind Newbin. Newbin has all the weird testing stuff going on. Um, I think ultimately, though, for sure, in the final version of all of this, Bullock is going to end up behind both Cole Bishop and Jaden Hicks. And honestly, Newbin might end up behind Cole Bishop and Jaden Hicks now that I'm looking at, at just the list. I don't know what to do with Newbin. I don't. Um, anyway, but that's another conversation for another day. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're on the YouTube side, thank you for once again putting up with, um, you know, how good I do not feel. Uh, buy the Green Bay Draft Guide. Use promo code DAILY for 10% off. Come to the live draft party at... Uh, Badger State Brewing on Friday, April 26th. Do everything you're supposed to do here. The Pack-A-Day podcast uh, YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, click the bell, get the notifications so that you can get every bit of Packers content that you require on a daily basis. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Go Pack Go.